Hey, my name is Kelly King, Park Superintendent at Medoc Mountain State Park in Hollister, North Carolina. We have an amazing snake that has been at Medoc Mountain for probably seven plus years at this point. So Charlie was born in captivity and we think he's about 12 years old. Um, he's a beautiful corn snake native to North Carolina. One of the really sad things about corn snakes is you can see that they very much are colored more vibrant but colored like copperheads. So unfortunately corn snakes um, get mistaken for them and will be often killed when they shouldn't be. Corn snakes are amazing snakes. They take care of all of the rodents for us. So Charlie will eat two mice a week. Out in, out in the wild, they'll eat when they feel like it. But we feed him on a schedule. So if you'll notice, Charlie is really tying himself up in knots. Um, and that is because he wants to feel secure and not having something to grab hold of, he's grabbed hold of himself. Um, so the question that I always, always get is how do you tell the difference between venomous versus non-venomous? Well, unfortunately, the only way you can do so is by getting really close to him. So the first way is by looking at the eyes. You'll notice on Charlie, he has nice round eyes, just like you and I do. And round pupils mean non-venomous. So that's the first way. Well, of course, you gotta get pretty close to see if they have round, or if it's a venomous snake, they're gonna have elliptical eyes like a cat would have or a goat. Um, but again, you're getting pretty close to them to be able to tell that. The other way you can tell is if I can get him untied. All right, Charlie. <laughs> is when you look underneath at their scales. And you'll notice, don't get into the microphone, Charlie. You'll notice on the scales that there's a single line of scales all the way down. And then we get to where he does his business, where he poops. And that's where this is. And after that, you'll notice that his scales are now broken into two. So there's a line down the middle of the bottom of his scales, making it into two scales per line. So that is another way you can tell venomous versus non. A venomous snake would have that single scale even after where you see where he relieves himself. So that's a, a second way, and again, obviously, we had to get really close to determine that. And then, where's he gone? <laughs> Is he under? Oh, he always does this. So he loves to go, again, feeling secure. He loves to go under my epaulette. So he feels nice and secure. And I'm going to encourage him to keep going. Come back around. There we go. All right, so the other way we can tell is by looking at the shape of the head. So you'll notice he has a nice blunt nose and his head may be just a little bit triangle but not very pronounced. For a venomous snake, they have a really pronounced, almost diamond shape, hence the diamond head, rattlesnake. And he does not, and you'll also notice he has no aggression, very calm. So those are the three ways you can tell. I'll show you again on the picture here. So, Round snout, pointy snout, more of a gentle slope to the head, going tapering back, really broad on the back of the, of the jaws here. And again, the vent, or where they go to the bathroom, single all the way down and breaks into a line between the two. So, what does this mean when you see a snake? Well, unless you can see the eyes really clearly, it is difficult to tell whether you have a venomous or non-venomous. And what I always tell folks, unless you're really clear on what you're looking at, look at it from afar, respect it, and then walk away. Take pictures so you can blow them up and see what kind of eye they had. But handling snakes is not one of the things that you want to do um, because you would hate to find out the hard way that the copperhead that you thought was a corn snake is actually a copperhead. Um, so we don't want anybody to be bitten. So then the other thing that I hear a lot is, um, oh, that's a poisonous snake, and don't mess with it. Well, unless you're going to eat a snake, 
you're not going to get poisoned. So poison is something you ingest. Venom is injected. So there are no poisonous snakes anywhere in the world because you can eat them. Um, but there are definitely venomous snakes. Um, so that's one of the things I like to clarify. Are you being shy? There we go. And then lastly, some of the myths that we talk about is even though I'm talking to Charlie a lot, he really can't hear me. Um, so they don't have, again, we'll look at his head, they don't have any external ear organs. They do, however, have internal ear organs. So that ear organ that's inside is actually directly connected to the jawbone. So when the snake is laying on the ground, the vibrations of us walking or a mouse hopping, all of that is actually picked up, transmitted through the jawbone to the inner ear. And that is how a snake will hear and know what's coming. So no, he can't hear me, but I talk to him all the time. Um, and then another myth that folks say, well, they have, they have nose, they have nostrils, so they definitely can smell through their nostrils. Again, looking at his face, yep, he's got a nose, a nostril. But that nostril is just for breathing. That's it. And otherwise, if we can catch his tongue coming out. Again, he's so gentle. The tongue serves two purposes. Obviously, the purpose that you and I have for a tongue is tasting. He can definitely do that. But the second purpose is that's how he smells. So the tongue will come out. It'll taste the air and it will taste the ground. And then it takes that inside its mouth and it picks up whatever it is. And when the tongue comes back inside, it actually is taken to the Jacobson organ. And that organ is what actually smells. So it pulls all of that in, the smells and also the minute um, organisms, and it can smell through that organ. And then that organ transmits that to the brain saying, we're on the trail of a mouse, let's keep going. Or nothing here, we'll move along. Um, so when you hear, yep, snakes smell with their tongue, literally they do. And then always everybody asks, well, why is the tongue forked? Well, having two forks going out is a lot more territory covered than just one little small tongue. And also, really cool, I don't know if you can get up close on that, but he's not opening his mouth to get his tongue out. He actually has a little notch in his mouth in the front, and his tongue goes through that notch without having to open. So Charlie is such an amazing, amazing corn snake, just as gentle as can be, and can show us how snakes are not to be feared. They are to be respected, because we want to make sure that we're not out killing any snakes, venomous or non. Um, and I know it's just kind of that gut instinct, that fight or flight snake, and we must kill it. But let's not, because they are so amazing. This little one will eat, oh, up to 200 mice um, every year, if not more than that, depending on how hungry he is. Um, so really just so beneficial to nature. Um, the king snake is phenomenal. If you see a king snake, you definitely want to save it because king snakes actually eat the venomous snakes, the copperheads and the water moccasins. Um, so that is Charlie. And lastly, we'll talk a little bit about their life cycle. So Colubidae's, the non-venomous snakes, um, they give birth through eggs. So if Charlie was a female, he would have a clutch of eggs. Um, so they lay their eggs, get them all nice and warm, stay with them until they hatch, and then off they go. Um, the viper, the vapidae, don't even quote me on that one, vipers, we'll go with vipers, um, they have live birth. Um, so your rattlesnakes, your cottonmouths, your copperheads, they'll give live birth. And then remember that last one, the non-viper venomous is the coral snake. And coral snakes are only found down in the Wilmington area at this point. Um, they're very small snakes. And the rhyme that you always remember is red on black, friend of Jack, red on yellow, kill a fellow. Um, so that's what you want to remember when you're looking at the colorization because king snakes have that same color, just the pattern switched. 
Um, but coral snakes, it's really difficult for folks to get bit by a coral snake. Um, they actually have to chew. So what they would do is find an area that's fairly small that they could fit their mouth on, grab hold, and then they actually have to work it to get the venom in. Um, so coral snakes, typically for an adult, we wouldn't be, if it, uh, um, really wouldn't be even messing with a coral snake. It's children that actually run into more problem with coral snakes because they are so vibrant and their fingers are much smaller. Um, so it's always good just to introduce children to snakes and how to be good with snakes without having to worry about them. We talked about the fact that they don't have a nose, they just have nostrils. The other thing they don't have is you'll notice he's never blinked. That's because snakes don't have eyelids. And so when they go to shed, what's amazing is their whole skin, including what's over their eyelid, will actually shed. And the reason they shed is a couple of reasons. One is they're growing. Obviously, they need to shed because they've outgrown their skin. But also, when they get older, like Charlie is, um, he doesn't grow so much as he just gets old skin. Um, so he'll actually shed his skin, and he sheds about once a month is what we've noticed. Um, what he'll do is he'll actually take in a lot of water right before he sheds so that he can get his skin to kind of pop it a little bit. And then he'll find a nice place to rub his nose and break that first layer of skin. And then along the branches or the rocks, what we have in his, his um, home, he'll actually use that to pull the skin back off of. And then he'll take all his skin off and he'll become this bright, shiny snake again. And just remember, we all shed. You and I drop millions of skin cells every day. Ugh. We just don't do it all in one piece. Thank goodness. Yep, so he's very vibrant. Now, a lot of folks think because of the shininess that he must be slimy like a worm. And he's not. He's just nice and cool, very smooth. Um, and if you'll notice how bumpy he is, these are all his scales. And when he does shed, you actually see that in the shed. And I wish we'd caught, kept some of it, but we didn't. And if it's a really good shed, you'll actually see the color pattern in that shed. It stays in the skin as well. So this has been Charlie. You've been visiting Medoc Mountain State Park. If you come to the Visitor Center, we'll be glad to introduce you to Charlie. Um, and Charlie, you're getting a little squirmy. Charlie just wants to have a good, oh, he is in my, come back out. <laughs> there he goes, okay. All righty. So just remember that when you see a snake in the wild, that's their home and let them be in their home. If you see a snake in your yard, if it's a venomous snake, you may just want to get a broom or something just to kind of ease it out of your yard. There's no need to kill it. Um, and just remember, snakes are so beneficial for the planet. And come visit Medoc Mountain and see Charlie.